Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 2 from the May 2013 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so for part A to the question, they give us a table and they show us some items, right, that are used to feed the debtor's control account. And they want us to identify the book of original entry that gives us the information. So, for example, the first one says total refunds to debtors. The, the book of original entry from which that comes is the cash book, right? Now, let me pull up my Excel spread where I've recreated the information. So, total dishonor checks. Dishonor checks have to do with the bank. And your books of original entry, also called your journals, include the following. Your sales journal, which records only credit sales of stock. Your purchases journal, which records only credit purchases of stock. Returns in journal and returns out, which records return in and returns out of stock only. Your cash book, which records all cash and bank transactions. And your general journal, which records all other transactions. Writing off of bad debts, correcting errors, the purchase and sale of fixed assets on credit, uh, adjustments and closing entries and these things, right? So this on a checks, checks deal with the bank. And as, a, as such, we'll, that will come from the cash book, right? Then we have total credit sales. As I just mentioned, the sales journal or the sales day book is the book of original entry that records credit sales of stock. Then we have total returns in words, that's returns in words journal. Receipts from debtors, that's the money coming from the debtors that will be recorded, of course, in the cash book. Discounts allowed, that will also be taken from the cash book and total bad debts, right? That will come from the general journal. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question, shall we? Okay, so this part, L. Somerset presented the following information for the month of October 2012. So they give us this table here, but let's take a look at the requirement. We are required to prepare the purchases ledger control account, the creditors control account for L. Somerset for the month of October 2012. So let's pull up the control account and we're going to populate it as we read through the items. So the first two items are the opening balances. Creditors ledger control account credit balance brought down 25.4. Creditors ledger control account debit balance brought down 14.50. So we're going to go across in the control account. We're going to put the credit balance on the credit side and we're going to put the debit balance on the debit side. So the purchases ledger control account, also known as the creditors control account, is the summary account of all of our creditors, as in trade creditors. Creditors are classified as a liability. Liabilities have credit balances at start. So that, this balance is the regular balance. This is what I call the irregular balance. That's what happens when we may possibly have overpaid our creditors or they owe us a refund for any reason. So because it's an amount owed to us, it's an asset and assets have debit balances. But we won't go and open an account in the sales ledger or debtors control to put that particular item in, right? It's coming to us from our creditors, leave it there. Okay, let's take a look at what else we have here. So we have returns outwards. Now, when we return stock to our creditors, we no longer have to pay for those items, which means the amount we owe to our creditors is coming down. And to record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. So you're seeing returns outwards on the debit side of the creditor's control account. Next, I'm seeing purchases for the quarter of 123,900. Now they didn't say credit purchases specifically, but there's no other information to indicate otherwise. So we are going to safely assume it's credit purchases. And of course that goes on the credit side. Why the credit side? Because that's exactly why we owe our creditors money. When we purchase goods from them on credit, we take goods without paying for them at the point in time when we take the goods. But we promise to pay for those goods later on. And once you have an obligation to transfer benefits in the future to some party, that's a liability. And for to record an increase in a liability, you have to credit the liability account. Next, I'm seeing payments to creditors and the amount there is 100,300. Now, when you pay back your creditors, you are paying off what you owe, thereby reducing your liability, which means that the liability is decreasing. And to record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. So you're seeing that item on the debit side. I'm now seeing refund by check from creditor due to damaged item. Okay, so when a creditor pays us, we're going to debit the cash book. 
and every debit needs a corresponding credit. So we're going to put the credit on this side here, refund from creditor. Right now, you may be saying, but Chris, if we put a refund on the credit side, it's increasing the liability. Right. Uh, that's so because this is supposed to offset this item here. Remember, it says refund. To get a refund from somebody, you had to have already paid them. And the payment was on the debit side. So if they're, if they're giving us back money, it means that we have to kind of counterbalance the debit entry. And to counterbalance the debit entry, we have to go on the credit side to record that item. Okay, next, I'm seeing discounts received. So discounts received, that is literally where our creditors reduce the amount that we have to pay them. And it encourages us to pay faster. So that's a literal reduction in the liability, which of course we know is recorded on the debit side of the liability account. Next, I'm seeing check returned by creditor presented too late to bank 3300. So what this means is that we gave the creditor a check, but the person may have forgotten about it or whatever the case was. And when they carried it to the bank, it was maybe stale dated. Checks are only valid for six months, in some cases 12. So let's say the creditor carried it very late and the bank said, look, this check is still dated. We can no longer honor it. So what happens is that the creditor has to give us back the check. So remember earlier on when we paid our creditors, we debited the account, right? If they give us back the money, guess what? We have to go on the opposite side, the credit side to record the return check from the creditor. Because basically when we paid them, we would have reduced the liability. But if they didn't cash the check and the check still dated, they didn't actually get the money. So the liability didn't actually go down, which means that this debit now has to be counterbalanced by a corresponding credit item. Now, it doesn't correspond to the same amount, obviously, but the credit item here will offset the, this, this particular one here or the balance or whatever the case is. All right, let's take a look at the next item here. Ooh, I'm seeing the ever popular set off credit amount between debtor's ledger and creditor's ledger 620. Now that's going to go on the debit side of the creditor's control account because it's reducing the liability. A set off is a cancellation of common debt. Let's say I owe you $10 and you owe me $8. So the easiest thing for us to do to pay off all amounts owed is for me to give you $2. So I'm not gonna pay you 10 and then you're gonna give me back eight. No, I'm just gonna pay you two, which means we cancel your $8 debt to me and we cancel $8 of the amount I owe to you. So we cancel the amount we owe to each other. And then the excess that was left over, the extra $2 I had for you, that was paid. So the amount, I can't, sorry, the set off is a cancellation of common debt. And cancellation implies reduction or decrease. And to record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. Now there's one last item. It says received from creditor due to overpayment 284. So again, when your creditor is paying you, that's going to go on the credit side here, right? So it's an overpayment. So it means that we paid too much. The debit item was too high. And to fix that, we have to counterbalance it, which means we have to go on the opposite side of the account and record, well, the appropriate amount to adjust it to the correct item. Okay, those are all of the items that go inside of there. So now all we have to do is balance off the account. So we know that there was an opening debit and an opening credit balance, but they didn't give us any information about a closing debit balance. So we could safely assume there's only a closing credit balance, which will be carried down from the debit side. To find that balance, you add up all of the items on the debit side, all of the items on the credit side, and obviously the credit side will be bigger. The credit side total will be bigger than the debit side total. And you will simply subtract to find the difference, which you will then put on the debit side and label as balance carried down. In this case, it's $47,994. Totaling both sides now will give us the same total on both sides. And of course, don't forget to bring your balance down on the credit side. If it's carried down from the debit, it's brought down on the credit side. Okay, I think there's one more part of this question. Let's take a look. All right, so it says here on 1st November 2012, Somerset discovered the following errors in the accounts. Okay, so the first thing was a purchase of equipment with 2100 had been included in the purchases figure. Mm, that's not where it's supposed to be included. And the check used to pay a creditor had been entered in the bank account as 12960 instead of 12690. Okay, that's an error of transposition. The digits were mixed up. Now, what do they want us to do? It says to use the general journal to correct the two errors above and a narrative for each journal entry is required just for five marks. Okay, so to correct this first error here, this is an error of principle. The wrong account, the wrong class of account was debited. 
right? Purchases is an expense and you're only supposed to debit purchases or enter purchases of stock in the purchases account. But we purchased equipment. So when you purchase equipment, we entered it in the purchases account. So that's wrong. So it means that we're missing a debit to equipment. Why? Because equipment is an asset. And when we buy equipment, the amount of the asset is going up or increasing. And to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. But instead of debiting equipment, we debited purchases. So to correct errors, you have to undo the wrong thing and do the right thing that should have been done. Now, when you are recording entries in the general journal, you have to enter your debit entries first. So to correct this first error, we're going to debit equipment for 2100 and we're going to credit the purchases account for 2100. Why are we crediting purchases? Because we put the equipment figure in purchases via a debit and it shouldn't have been put there. So to remove that debit or counterbalance it, we have to go on the opposite side of the account, which is the credit side. Now, of course, this puts a narrative and this is simply to correct an, well, it should say an error of principle. Sorry about that. Okay, so the second error here is that the check used to pay a creditor had been entered in the bank account as 12,960 instead of 12,690. Now, a couple of things here. One, the amount that was entered in the bank account was too much. 12,960 instead of 12,690. That's $270 too high. Now, that's one thing. The other thing was that it was entered in the bank account incorrectly. It doesn't say it was entered in the creditor's account incorrectly. So this is a one-sided error, which means we are going to need the suspense account to correct it. So how do we do that? So first of all, if we paid a creditor, we would have credited bank. Now we credited bank for 12,960 instead of 12,690. So the amount of the credit is too high. To fix or counterbalance that, we have to go on the opposite side of the account, which is the debit side, and enter the amount by which it was overstated. Now that's 270. So again, you see the debit entry entered first for 270. And because the bank account was the only account affected by the error, we will use the suspense account to facilitate the double entry. Or in other words, we will we'll credit the suspense account because no other account was affected by the error. And of course, we say to correct incorrect amount credited to the cash book. All right, so that's about it. Okay guys, so there you have it. That is the solution for question two from the May 2013 PLA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you will find some PLA handouts that will be useful to you. Anyhow guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.